ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Mark Blunden and this is The Leader. With thigh bones bigger than a person is tall, but thankfully without an appetite for human flesh, a cast of the biggest dinosaur ever to have been discovered is going on display in London, including its half-ton leg bone. So how did this resin replica of a 101 million year old fearsome vegetarian end up at the Natural History Museum? It's actually a youngster in archaeology terms after being dug up in Patagonia in 2010 and now is on loan to London from colleagues in Argentina. At 37 metres long and 5 metres tall, the Titanosaur dwarfs South Kensington's previous largest sauropod, the much-loved Dippy the Diplodocus, who's also a replica. In fact, the Argentinian original of the Titanosaur was so big that a researcher appeared considerably shorter when photographed next to the dinosaur's thigh bone. And despite its vegetarian diet, Patogo Titan Maorum, to give the animal its Latin name, weighed more than nine African elephants. Now, it takes up residence at the Waterhouse Gallery, and so what does this beast look like? Let's ask Sinead Marin, the Natural History Museum's Titanosaur exhibition lead. Maybe a good place to start is that I think a lot of people might not necessarily know what a titanosaur is, but people might have um, seen our most famous dinosaur, Dippy. So a bit like Dippy, a titanosaur has a long neck and a long tail. But unlike Dippy, some titanosaurs grew to be much, much bigger. So big, in fact, that they were the largest animals to have walked on land. So we have one very special titanosaur coming to London. Its name is Patigo Titan. And uh, it was about 37 metres long uh, when it was alive and it weighed 57 tonnes. So that's about four times heavier than Dippy. So we're really excited to be showing this special creature in London, in fact, in Europe for the first time next year. Unlike Dippy, we've not yet given it a nickname, but maybe people will come up with their own nicknames when they come and see it. What do we know about how the remains were discovered? This dinosaur was discovered in 2010 in Patagonia in Argentina. And amongst the the giant titanosaurs that we know about, Patago Titans fossils are among the most complete. So we know more about it than many of those other giants. It was discovered by a farmer who stumbled across um, what looked like some fossils uh, poking out of the ground. And so scientists came and investigated and very quickly realised that what they were dealing with was something very special because that first bit of bone that was poking out of the ground turned out to be a 2.4 metre long thigh bone. Um, So uh yeah a very clear indication that the creature that it belonged to was an absolute giant it's quite rare to find um a very complete skeleton and so what is amazing about uh, this titanosaur is that they found around 280 bones from at least six individuals uh all at the same site so um yeah the the a replica skeleton that we've got is pieced together from all of these different individuals. What did the titanosaur eat to get so big? A bit like Dippy, these titanosaurs were giant plant-eating machines. Um, and there's lots of different factors probably that could have contributed to it growing and evolving into such a giant. So it had to be able to hold up 57 tonnes of weight on four, four legs. So the way that its body was built Um, allowed it to support that huge weight but it also needed to get enough energy and enough plant material into it to be able to power such an enormous body so it um, was like a yeah a plant eating machine with this uh, long neck that enabled it to stand in one place uh, and not move to be able to eat from lots of trees around it and lots of plants around it without having to to haul its enormous weight around the place. I would say it wasn't a particularly fearsome creature, but I don't think you'd want to be standing underneath it uh, when it was about to move its feet. But it's not the entire remains. The exhibition will feature a full replica of the whole of this titanosaur's skeleton. Uh, So that's 
about 37 metres long. And around that, we also have lots of real fossils and lots of different interactive games that also help tell the story of this giant. The bones themselves, I mean, I think for me, the most incredible thing is just the sheer scale and the sense of awe and wonder at the size of something that the natural world can produce. The thigh bone alone, that bone that came out, that fossil that we're putting on display, that one bone weighs about 500 kilos. Showing that replica enables us to fill in the gaps in what wasn't found at that site. Uh, It was a treasure trove of material, but um, not every bone from the dinosaur was found. So to be able to to show the whole creature, we fill in those gaps. But yeah, well, it's on display alongside the some of the fossil remains. Let's go to the ads coming up. Why Patagonia is a hotbed of archaeological discovery. Why not hit rate and follow in the meantime? What do we know about the lifespan of the titanosaur based on the bones found in Argentina? They probably lived between about 30 and 50 years. We know actually from the fossils of, you know, even though this specimen is an absolute giant, we can actually tell from its bones that it wasn't quite fully grown. It still had a little bit more growing to do. Um, so it was nearing adult. Hood, um, but not quite there. Why is Patagonia such a hotbed for dinosaur discovery? One of the kind of big mysteries, I suppose, uh, is why some of so many of these giant dinosaurs are being found in Patagonia. Um, obviously, some of it might be to do with the past and to do what with what Patagonia looked like um, 101 million years ago when this dinosaur was roaming around. But it might also be to do with the kind of landscape that's there today that makes these fossils particularly accessible and and easy to find. We're really excited to show this particular titanosaur, Patagotitan, in uh, the UK, even in Europe, for the very first time. So excited for people to be able to come and experience the awe and wonder of standing underneath one of the largest animals to have ever walked on Earth. Is there anything else on show with the titanosaur cast? Yeah, so we have some uh, exciting fossils uh, that will sit alongside um, the whole skeleton of the dinosaurs. So we have a fossilised titanosaur egg, which, you know, when you think about how big these creatures grew to be, they actually started off relatively tiny, so about the size of a human baby. So that egg that we've got is about 15 centimetres across. Um, And we also have some uh, really exciting fossils from the Natural History Museum's own collections. So things like a fossilised titanosaur coprolite, or that's that's the name for a fossilised poo, and also some fossilised skin. And with the evidence that archaeologists have uncovered in Argentina, is it possible to work out the sex of the dinosaur from the bones? No, it's actually really hard to tell that with dinosaurs in general. There's very few dinosaurs that we're yeah, able to know whether they were male or female. And what about Dippy? Where's London's favourite Diplodocus been? Yeah, Dippy's been off on an adventure around the UK over the last few years and has actually been back in London as the final stop on its tour. What's your take on the enduring interest of real life shows like this when you can these days just get all the info online? That sense of awe and wonder of standing beside a creature like this that is like nothing we have on Earth today and getting to experience that scale, that those kinds of emotions you get from that are are something that I think you can only really get in person when you when you see something um yeah in in real life. So those, yeah, I think it's those emotions that we're really hoping that this exhibition will inspire in people. And I think that those emotions are what connect us to the natural world and inspire us to look after and protect it. And I think that dinosaurs in general, like loads of people love dinosaurs um, and they're a great way to start thinking about things like extinction and evolution and ecosystems, which again are the foundation of what we need um, to protect the natural world today. There's more news and features in the evening Standard newspaper and online at standard.co.uk. That's The Leader. We're back on Tuesday at 4pm.